my Doctor Who DVD collection. It's Captain Jack Harkness, the face of Bill. Hello and welcome to WhoTube Gallifrey 02 and my episode review for episode 7 of series 10 of Doctor Who, The Pyramid at the End of the World. Possibly the shortest title for a Doctor Who episode ever, even shorter than Journey to the Centre of the TARDIS. Well, longer. So yes, this episode is the second part of the three parter in the middle of series 10 and personally I think this episode was very good indeed and possibly my second favourite or third favourite of the series so far and I would personally rate this episode an 8.5 out of 10. Yes the pilot still beats it and it is on par with Thin Ice but it's a lot better than Extremis as this episode actually set something up for the finale of the three parter. It's a bit like the Star Wars prequel trilogy. The Phantom Menace didn't set much up, but then Attack of the Clones did. I think this is like the Attack of the Clones of the mid three parter. So yes, the mid three parter is going so far good, and I hope the Lie of the Land doesn't mess it up, as it does l look a little bit far fetched. So yes, this episode was very good in my opinion. And yeah, this episode was written by Peter Harness and Stephen Moffat. And yeah, Peter Harness has definitely improved since Kill the Moon. Yes, this episode doesn't beat the Zygon 2 parter, but yeah, I think Peter Harness has redeemed himself from that episode, not like Frank Cottrell Boyce, who, yeah, he did make it better, but he didn't really redeem himself for writing Smile over in the Forest of the Night. So yeah, I do think Peter Harness should come back and write another episode in the future. So yes, this episode, very good in my opinion, and this time it is real. So yes, the plot for this episode. So in Extremis, it was basically a build-up, a prequel to the next two episodes, a virtual reality of what ha the monks wanted to happen to Earth. So yes, in this episode, a pyramid is placed in a strategic point between the Russian, American and Chinese armies. So yes, they all come together into the middle, but the monks kind of want them to start a World War 3, and yeah, all want them to like sign an agreement so they can take over their planet, as they have the most power on the Earth. However, somewhere else in the UK, there is this research lab, and yeah, they're experimenting with chemicals, and yes, something goes wrong with the chemicals, and yes, it goes wrong, it starts leaking throughout the lab. So yes, the monks do offer these people to take over the world, but then the people don't want it. So you have a doctor and Nardle go to this lab to try and stop it, and yes they do stop it, but at a cost. Bill gives the agreement for them to take over the world, so the doctor can get his eyesight back and escape the lab he wants to explode and that leads in to the next story the lie of the land where the monks have taken over the world i don't know how they're going to do it i think it might reverse i think it's going to be a bit like last of the time lords when time reverses i think it's kind of a rip-off of that free parter as extremist utopia their build-up stories pyramid at the end of the world the sound of drums they're the mid stories and then both the Light of the Land and Last of the Time Lords, their stories set in the future and ruled by someone else. So it's very similar, these two three parters of the modern era. And I don't know what's going to happen in Light of the Land, whether the Doctor's going to defeat the monks or time will reverse. We'll have to wait and see. So, positives of this episode. So, I really like the scenery in this episode. The pyramid looked great, and yeah, I really like the pyramid. I liked how at the beginning when they were doing the previously trailer, it went from previously to now. Never done that before with a TV show to keep on switching between the previously and the present day. Very unique and very different. The reference to Donald Trump, that was quite funny. Also, Nardle in this episode was okay. Nardle I actually like now. At the beginning of series 10, I was really 
nervous about him because he's just an idol really and yeah I thought he was going to be like what he was like in the husband's of a song but his character had improved yeah he was good in this episode the characters were good in this episode possibly the best characters we have had so far in series 10 of Doctor Who as a lot of the characters in the past episodes haven't seemed that real especially in Knock Knock the characters were really stereotypical and yeah I didn't like characters in Knock Knock or Smile the nice characters, they were okay. The pilot characters, there weren't many of them. And oxygen characters, they were okay. And extremist characters, they were okay as well. But these are the first characters who are actually quite good and believable. Also in this episode, I loved the element of war and politics in this. It was really good and very well portrayed. A very good mid to start to a three-parter, building up for the finale of the three-parter. Not much of the vault in this episode. There wasn't much at all of the vault in this episode. I don't think it was even mentioned, the vault, in this episode. It didn't link in at all with the vault this episode. You would think, because it's the mid-three-parter, and it's all about Doctor Who mythology, that it would. But it didn't... There wasn't one reference to the vault in this episode, as far as I'm concerned. So, yeah, that's a bit different. No vault in this episode, even though it would be the episode which you would think the vault would be in. The monks, yeah, they were okay in this episode, apart from their voice. It was a bit tricky to understand in some points of this episode. The Termesic Stan element of this episode, like that, very good indeed. A fictional country, which is good because it doesn't offend anyone. And yeah, now on to negatives. So yes, the first negative is the CGI in this episode. The CGI was pretty bad. Especially when the monks, the pyramid, got hold of that plane. That just looked so bad when that beam out the pyramid got hold of the plane. That was so, so bad. That was worse than a 1970s episode of the CGI in that bit. You know, when in 2017 we shouldn't be seeing CGI like that, it was really bad the CGI in that shot. Also, the CGI thing of the plane, the doctor's plane going through the air, that was a bit, you know, that didn't look realistic either. You know, they should have just got footage of an actual plane. And also, the zoom in of Earth at the beginning, that also looked bad. Worse, worse than the zoom that's in on Earth in Series 1 of Doctor Who. And yeah, that was over 10 years ago now, so yeah. Why couldn't they just recycle that shot? They've recycled shots before. And yeah, I wouldn't mind if it was that. It's when they reshoot things like in Dalek. No, into the Dalek. They reuse shots from Dalek. And I really didn't like that in that episode. As that Dalek wasn't there. That Dalek died. So yeah. This episode, personally, was very good. Just had a few negatives. Especially with the CGI. But overall, I thought this episode was very good indeed. Please stay tuned for my next episode, which is tomorrow, where I will be giving you my episode preview for The Lie of the Land. So until the next time, goodbye. <laughs>